I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about continuous random variables. It is the first video in a three-part series discussing continuous random variables. This particular video is about general continuous random variables, and the next two are about uniform and then normal random variables. This comes after a five-part video series talking about discrete random variables. So I first want to just remind you that discrete random variables have a finite or countable or countably infinite support. And they also have a probability mass function that describes the probability that the random variable is equal to a particular value. In contrast, continuous random variables, number one, have an uncountable or uncountably infinite support. And secondly, and perhaps weirdly, it actually turns out that the probability for a continuous random variable to be equal to any particular value is equal to zero. And this is related to the fact that there are an uncountably infinite number of possible values that that continuous random variable can take on, and therefore we can't mathematically have probabilities for individual values. But we, you will see that continuous random variables can still take on values, it'll just mean that we have to treat it mathematically slightly differently than we had to with discrete random variables. All right, so let's start with the uh, piece that's probably the most similar, that is the cumulative distribution function. Discrete random variables had a CDF, and continuous random variables have a CDF, and the definition is actually the same for both of them. That is, it's the probability of the random variable being less than or equal to a particular value. Now we can change this up slightly if we want to for continuous random variables, and we can say that it's also the same as the probability of the random variable being less than the uh, particular value that we're interested in. And the reason we can say this is because the probability of being equal to any particular value is zero. So being less than or being less than or equal to are the same probability. Now, uh, this has the same properties that it had before. So that is the CDF is always a value between zero and one, zero and one being inclusive. Uh, it is always a monotone increasing function. That means it never goes back down as you move to the right on the x-axis. And it also means that if you take limits, if needed, uh, to the left and to the right, that you get uh, zero to the left and you get one to the right. Okay, so exactly the same as we had for discrete random variables. All right, so now let's start talking about some differences. In particular, let's talk about the probability density function. Remember that discrete random variables had a probability mass function. Continuous random variables don't have a probability mass function. Instead, they have a probability density function. The probability density function is actually just the derivative of the cumulative distribution function for continuous random variables. Uh, or you can go the reverse. You can say that the CDF, the cumulative distribution function, is the integral of the probability density function from negative infinity up to the particular value x where you want to evaluate that CDF. All right, uh, the properties for a probability density function or PDF are slightly different than they were for a probability mass function. For a PDF, a probability density function, the key criteria is that number one, it's always greater than or equal to zero. But notice that it does not need to be less than one. That was a criteria for the probability mass function, but it turns out that a probability density function can and often will be greater than one. So the second criteria for a probability density function is that it integrates to one over the whole real line. So that is the area under the curve for a probability density function is always going to be one, right? If you're not familiar with integrals, Think of integrals as the area under the curve, and the area under any probability density function is always one. All right, so let's just talk about uh, an example probability density function. The, here's an example. It is zero almost everywhere, okay? The only place that it's not zero is between zero and one, and between zero and one, the probability density function is three times x squared, x being the value where we want to evaluate this probability density function. Uh, it's a valid PDF, number one, because it's always greater than or equal to zero, right? When we have that squared term, even if we plug in a negative value, uh, although we, it's irrelevant because it's only valid on zero to one, but if we were, it would still be positive. Um, but x3, x squared on the range zero to one is always positive. 
Uh, all right. The secondly, the second requirement for a PDF was that it integrates to one. And so we can do the integral here. It's not too difficult, right? The indefinite integral is x cubed. You evaluate that at one and then subtract it, evaluate it at zero, and it turns out that it, you get one. So the integral, the area under the curve for this particular PDF is one as it is required to be for a valid probability density function. All right, so this example provides a valid probability density function. We can derive the CDF. The CDF is going to be zero all the way up to zero because there's no probability that this random variable is anything less than zero. And now between zero and one, we've already calculated the integral and that was x cubed. So between zero and one, the CDF ramps up like x cubed. And then above one, the CDF is just going to be one. So it's a piecewise function, right? One piece less than or equal to zero, next piece between zero and one where it's x cubed, and the third piece greater than or equal to one where it's always one. All right, so um, now we're gonna go back to talk about general random variables, continuous random variables, and talk about the expectation. So just like discrete random variables, continuous random variables have a definition for expectation. So the expectation of a function h for a continuous random variable is just the integral over the whole real line of h evaluated at all the values for that random variable x times the probability density function. All right, so that's the definition of expected value. It should look similar to you to the definition for a discrete random variable. But the difference here is that we have now an integral sign rather than a summation, All right? But you can still think about it as being a weighted average where the weights here are now like, still um, the probabilities. In this case, it's a probability density function rather than the probability mass function it was for discrete random variables. Uh, but we're weighting those values h of x by that PDF. Um, in particular, we might be interested in the expectation of the random variable that occurs when h is just the identity function. And so here's the integral where we've just plugged in x equal, the h of x equals x. Uh, and that's the expectation of x. And like with discrete random variables, we will commonly use mu for the expectation of a random variable. Now, if we go back to our example, we can calculate the expectation for this continuous random variable. We just need to use the definition on the previous slide with the integral. And so here we show it very quickly with no pauses, right? We just have the integral of x times the PDF. Um, Remember that this PDF is zero everywhere outside of zero to one. So the integral becomes just an integral on the range zero to one. The, um, we have three X squared times X there. So we forgot to put the X in. Oh, X cubed. Good. It's three X cubed. Uh, if we take the uh, integral and we evaluate it at one and then subtract it, evaluate it at zero, what we find is that the expected value is three quarters. Now, just like with discrete random variables, we have an interpretation for this expectation of the random variable as the center of mass. So what I've drawn here is the uh, probability density function for uh, this particular random variable. This is just the three X squared uh, function, but then I've shaded in all the area from that PDF down to zero. So if we think of that as a, a real object in this two dimensional space, and we say, where can we put a fulcrum to perfectly balance this object? It turns out that that fulcrum is gonna be located at three quarters. And that's the location where this object is going to perfectly balance and not fall over. All right, so let's talk about the variance. The variance has the same definition that we had before. It's the expected square deviation from the mean. But just like with expectation, right, or with the definition of expectation, we're going to have to now do an integral. So here we have is x minus mu squared weighted by the probability density function integrated over the whole real line. That mu is just the expected value, just like it was with discrete random variables. Um, and similarly, we're going to use sigma squared to represent this variance. We can also calculate the standard deviation just like it was before. It's going to be the positive square root, and we will commonly use sigma to represent that standard deviation. All right, so let's just go back to the example and, and show a, an example of where we derive the variance. Um, 
you can work through this on your own, right? There's a bit of math there, but eventually you get down to the variance for this particular random variable is 3 80th. All right, so that was an example. Uh, some properties can, but we went through CDF, PDF, expectation, variance uh, for continuous random variables. I want to recap now the difference between discrete and continuous random variables, okay? For this slide and for future videos, we're going to drop the subscript that we've been carrying around quite a bit and only include subscripts where we might need to include subscripts to make it clear what's going on. So in particular, we have discrete and continuous random variables. They have a support. Discrete random variables are finite or countable, whereas continuous random variables are uncountable for that support. Discrete random variables have PMF. A continuous random variable does not. Likewise, a discrete random variable does not have a PDF, but a continuous random variable does have that probability density function. The CDF has the same definition, although in the continuous case, we can drop the equality sign because the probability for a continuous random variable to be equal to any particular value is zero. And the difference in calculating this CDF is that in the discrete case, we're going to have a sum, and in the continuous case, we have an integral.